Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are in my kitchen and it is a cold, wintry day here in Perth. So I'm gonna be inside, nice and warm, and I'm gonna have my dehydrator going all weekend with lots of leftover produce that I wanna get dried and preserved so it doesn't go to waste. I've got a bunch of apples and I love dehydrated apples. So I'm gonna do a batch of those and then I've also got some broccoli stems which I have left over that I've saved and I'm not gonna let those go to waste. So I'm gonna make some broccoli chips as well with a few herbs and spices plus a few other things. So keep watching and I'm gonna share some of my dehydrating tips at the end of this video. So if you are new to dehydrating and wanna learn a few extra tips so you can dehydrate your own things at home, you don't need a dehydrator. Um, you can use the oven and you can also use the sun as well if it is nice and sunny, which today definitely is not. So if you want to learn more about dehydrating, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe and let's get started. Also, hopefully the thunder doesn't interrupt us because it is very loud. First off, I'm gonna wash my apples and I like to do this with a bit of apple cider vinegar that helps get off any of the weird things that are on the surface of the apple as I didn't grow these in my garden. Um, so I want to make sure that they are nice and clean. Next up I am going to slice my apples. I like to use a mandolin because I can get them all the same thickness and it's really quick and easy. I like to leave the skin on when I do this because I don't mind the flavour of the skin and also it's less waste. Plus the core as well. Again I don't mind the flavour of the core. It's so much quicker and easier. I don't have to peel them and core them. I feel like that would take a long time and I just like to quickly slice them up and chuck them in the dehydrator. I also like to add some freshly squeezed lemon to my apples which will stop them going brown and also these are quite ripe. They've been in the fridge a little while so they're extra sweet and the lemon will give them a little bit more tartness. Now I'm just going to pop my trays in the dehydrator or if you have you can use the oven and then turn it to around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius and until they're dry. Okay, so I have got my apples all dehydrated. These are about six to eight hours in here. And the time it takes to dehydrate will just depend on a few factors. That is the temperature of your dehydrator or your oven and then also how thick you cut your fruit or vegetables plus how much water content they have in them. Um, so there's no one rule for apple slices or anything like that. These ones I cut pretty thin and they were all cut the same size using my mandolin. So they all pretty much dried the same. And I'm just gonna let them cool down because they're still a little bit warm. So you wanna let them cool down completely. And they're not sticky to touch anymore. They're really dry and they are delicious. Dried apples are just so sweet. They're like lollies. They're so good. So I have jars that I've cleaned. These jars are just part of my pickle obsession. I have lots of jars all the same because I love eating a lot of pickles. And so I've cleaned these. So I'm gonna take out these trays of apples to cool down and I'm gonna actually put the jars in the dehydrator on a high temperature just to make sure I've got all the moisture out of the jars because I want the jars to be really nice and dry as well as the apples to be really dry so that they store well and they don't go moldy. So a lot of people have a lot of issues with mold or humidity when dehydrating. I'm pretty lucky here in Perth it's really dry, we don't have a lot of humidity although it is raining today so I'm being a little bit cautious and I'm making sure everything is really dry. I think one thing to note is that you do have to dry them out more than the ones that you see at the shops. So the ones you see at the shops that are a little bit more plump and juicy often have heaps of preservatism or sulfate. So the ones that we do at home do have to be a little bit drier than the ones that you buy at the shops. Um, and that's just because we're not putting anything weird or nasty into them. They're just plain apples. Still delicious. Oh my God, I have to stop eating these. So you can probably see that I have not cored my apples. I've left the core in there and that's just because one, I can't be bothered. It, I don't feel like it affects the taste or the flavor at all. I mean, it's a little bit more crunchy in the center, but I don't mind it. So I'm not gonna waste my time taking out the core um, when I don't really care. So that is why 
mine don't have a hole in the middle. And you can also sprinkle these with cinnamon. That's another really yum thing to do with the apples, is sprinkle them with cinnamon and then pop them in the dehydrator and you'll have cinnamon apples. So I've got a mixture of green apples and red apples. Just some ones that I had left over in my fridge. Alright, so I've just popped my jars in here and I'm gonna make sure they're really dry before I put the apples in. So now we just need to put the lid on. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn these broccoli stems into some broccoli chips. I'm gonna put some herbs and spices on them and pop them in the dehydrator to make some broccoli stem chips. So I'm always trying to come up with ways that I can get the most out of everything that I grow. I don't want anything to go to waste. It took me a long time to grow these things from a seed to a seedling and then to get the harvest before any of the bugs do. So I don't want to let anything go to waste and I want to make sure that I can eat the whole thing. There are heaps of different ways to use broccoli stems. Um, whether you make a soup with them or pickle them, but today I'm just going to make the chips with them so I can have a delicious healthy snack in my pantry whenever I need one, um, along with my apples. Okay, so in here I have got half a teaspoon of turmeric, which has really good anti-inflammatory properties. And what else have I got? Um, half a teaspoon of paprika, smoked paprika. I have got half a teaspoon of chili flakes and, and two teaspoons of um, sea salt flakes. And I'm just gonna mix that around as a seasoning and then I'm gonna pop these in the dehydrator. It's important to know that turmeric is really good at staining things so make sure you don't get it on your clothes and even the bench tops make sure that you clean them really well or put something underneath like a chopping board all right so now in here i've just got half a leftover zucchini which i've just put salt pepper and some chili flakes and that is going to be another vegetable chip i'm going to pop in the dehydrator so while my dehydrator is going, I don't want to waste that energy by having it half empty, so I'm just going to keep filling it up with whatever I can find. I've got half a zucchini that I've added in there to make zucchini chips, and I have one lonely pear, so I'm going to chop this up and add it in as well, so that all my trays are full. So while they're cooking, I will just give you a few little extra tips to dehydrating, if you are new to dehydrating. So the main thing is, is to try and cut your fruit really thin and evenly. So I think with beginners doing dehydrating, a lot of people cut their fruit and veggies too thick and it takes a really long time to dehydrate. And also unevenly. So some will be really dry and some will be will take a lot longer. So try and cut them evenly. And that's where um, I find the mandolin comes in really handy. I love this thing. I have no idea what brand it is. It is just some random one that I picked up. And it means that I can quickly chop up my fruit and veggies all the same thickness and it means that they cook evenly. It does take a long time, so about six to eight hours for most of the stuff that I'm doing, but fruits that have a lot more water content will take longer, so you could be dehydrating for a few days even for some of them. Don't get too hung up on the time, like if you're reading a recipe and it says, you know, it takes eight hours, then it will be so different for everyone. So just do it until they're dry. That is the main thing, do it until they're dry. They shouldn't still be sticky or wet. If they're sticky, then they're probably not gonna be dry enough and you may end up with mold. So get them nice and dry. You wanna store them somewhere where they are also kept really dry and as little oxygen as possible. So fill the jar up as much as you can so there's not much space in there and make sure the jar is clean and really dry. And I just store these in my pantry. 
these I would keep for six months to a year. If they look fine, they haven't got any moisture on, or they, they can keep a lot longer, but apples will not last even a month. <laughs> They're so good. The other thing is some questions about what dehydrator I use. I have the BioChef Arizona 6 tray, and I will pop a link to that below. Um, I did a lot of research when I was picking out which dehydrator to get because they're sort of like one of those things that can sit in the cupboard and not get used and I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted to be using it as much as I could to try and preserve lots of my harvests and so I wanted something that was easy, that was quiet and that I really liked. So one thing I really like about this dehydrator is it's quiet, like it's going at the moment and hopefully you can hear me. Um, it also has individual trays that you can pull out. So what you can do is you can stack your different vegetables, putting all the same thickness on one, and that way when that the thinnest one is ready, you can just pull that out and you can leave the others to keep going and you don't have to dig around and unstack them like the round ones. The round ones, you sort of have to pull all the trays out to get to the bottom tray, whereas this one, you just lift up the lid and you can pull out the tray that you want. So that is really good. I love my dehydrator. So that is it from me today. If you do want to learn more about dehydrating, definitely leave me comments below and I will try and answer your questions or I may even do another video on it. So just leave your questions below and if you haven't already, check out my dehydrated lemon video because I love dehydrated lemons. I use them all the time and they lemons are something that are in season at the moment and when lemons are in season they usually come in huge abundance and you don't want to waste those delicious lemons so you can preserve them by dehydrating them which is super quick and easy and I will pop the link to that video here and below in my description as well so make sure you check those out. And if you did like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends so that more people can learn how to cook and preserve their own food naturally and sustainably.